Hi and welcome, my name is Jamie Hartley here at Crossfader and I have five tips in this video to help you better organize your Serato DJ Pro music library. These tips, you don't have to use them all, but definitely some of them you could apply to your management and create a library that's much cleaner to use, easier to use, and offers up suggestions on what to even play next. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a link to our Crossfader music pack. It's free to download once you sign up, and that will help you build your music library as well. The tracks are perfect for just getting started and learning basic transitions, so make sure to stick around to the end, and also let me know at the end which of these five tips you're going to start using or which one was your favorite. Let's get stuck in. first thing you're going to need to do is make sure that you can see all the information you need as a DJ. So a lot of DJs might like to see things like the BPM information, the key information, maybe when the track was produced, like what year. Um, and even in Serato DJ Pro, you can see how many times the track has been played. So let's look at how to change how your library looks. We can choose different column headers by right clicking on this top here where it says song and artist and BPM. And you can choose any of these options. Can choose to add or take them away so i've got some of my favorite things ticked here this is down to personal preference i've got things ticked i just need to rearrange them so i could say okay i don't need the song to be that wide i can just drag it a bit shorter drag the artist a bit shorter the key definitely doesn't need to be that wide and i'd quite like to get rid of album actually i don't need album and i'm going to bring the play count to here so I can see how many times even a track has been played. This is a really good tip, especially if you're a working DJ and you're playing in clubs a lot. You can quickly get to tracks that you regularly play. You know they're the tracks that are probably going to work because the big hitters, the club bangers, um, and you can organize your library in that way. So you could just literally click this and look at some of your most popular tracks um, and what's been played. This is a brand new laptop, so some of this stuff hasn't really been played that much. Um, but if you're a working DJ, this is a great tool to have. I will regularly jump onto my entire library and sort by BPM and look through the BPM order. I will then try and find tracks that work in key and I'll look through in key order. Um, and I'll also look at date added and do it in descending order so I can go to the top of my library and look at what the latest tracks I've added are. For my second tip, I know how frustrating it can be and how long-winded it can be to download lots of new music and then have to organize it into lots of different crates. So what we can do is create something called a smart crate and this is where Serato starts to automate the process for you. You can define some rules and then if the track that you've downloaded fits those rules, it will automatically add it to that crate. So let's have a look at some examples. If we click this icon here, the blue crate icon, this is a smart crate. All we need to do is create some rules. So click add rule, and then we can choose something. For example, a good idea, I like to get all of the tracks within a certain BPM range. So I could say, I want all of the tracks in my library that are greater than or equal to, let's keep it at 100, and then BPM again, that are less than or equal to 110 BPM. I could then save that, and we'll see in create one, it will automatically bring in all the tracks that are between that BPM range into this crate. Now, if I download some new music and it's within that BPM range, it will automatically add it to that crate, which is really useful. So I would then label this 100 BPM to 110 BPM. You could take this further. Obviously, you can then set all different ranges, 110 to 120, 120 to 130, etc. Um, but you could take this further. So let's edit this crate. If we then click on the edit button here, we can add more rules. So I could say, okay, I want everything between those BPM ranges, but I also want it to be a new song. I don't want it to pull loads of old music that I'm not gonna play at whatever party or event. So I want it to be added after, let's say a month ago. So if I did 14th of the 10th, 2019, and press save, suddenly it will refresh with this icon, it's just searching, and there we go. There's only a few tracks in there now, but it means it's my, the tracks that are much more relevant to maybe the crowd that I'm playing to or much later added to my library. This is also where that DJ play count comes in. If we edit that again, you could say, okay, rather than that, I want it to be tracks that have been played more than 
five times. Now, I don't know if this is going to pull anything up in my library, for example, because there's not much in my library with this new laptop, but there we go. There's one track there, Insane in the Brain, Cypress Hill, absolute tune. For tip number three, now this is important if you're making edits to your song. So for example, if you are changing the grid of a song, and once you've corrected the grid, you don't want anything to mess that up. If you re-analyze your entire library, you don't want it to analyze the grid wrong again. So being able to lock the track is very important too. Also, sometimes I've downloaded tracks from record pools and I've wanted to change the grid or edit the, 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 the track in some way, um, the information on the track, and it's been locked. And I've struggled, to, it, it says it can't be read or it can't do this. And that's because the track has a lock on it. So let me show you how to lock and unlock individual tracks. All we need to do is on a track, this very first column here, there's nothing in it at the moment, but if we hold command and click, you'll see a padlock appears. And what it does is it locks all the information of that track so that it can't be amended or adjusted or, or accidentally changed. The same goes, if we do it again, press command and click, it unlocks it. So if you ever come across where a track can't be reanalyzed or whatever reason you can't do something to a song, but the data of the song, then that'll be it. Command and click, command and click. This next tip is very important if you're a DJ that is playing out regularly to lots of different styles of crowds. You might have created a load of crates in your Serato DJ Pro and some crates you might want to organize by BPM. Then other crates you might want to organize by key and then other crates you might want to organize by the date that they've been added to your library. Without a setting turned on, no matter what crate you're in, it will do it with whatever is, is, is selected. So for example, if I've got date added as my column sorting option, if I go to all, it's still by date added. If I go into any of the other folders, it's all by date added. Now to set up different ones for different crates, you can do custom crate columns. If we go to the gear icon again in Serato, go to library and display options, and then custom crate columns, just tick that option. Now, it will remember whatever column you had selected when you were last in that crate. So for example, I could go to this transition tips, I could organize that by date added, I could go to this junk playlist, let me go one that's a bit more Saturdays and do that by numerical order, I could do another by key, and then when I go back to them, so if I go back to transition tips, it's by date added, if I go to this one, it's by numerical value, if I go to this one, it's by key. So it remembers the last option that you had selected on that particular crate, which is really useful because sometimes you want crates organized in one way and sometimes in, you want them organized in another way. You don't want to have to keep resorting your crates every time you go into that, that, that particular crate. Lastly, while we're talking about columns in Serato, you can actually link two columns together. So say for example, you want to organize your entire music library by BPM, but then also attach the key information to that as well. So it will group the BPMs in order and then the keys in order of BPM as well. To do this, it's very simple. Organize by your first column first. So if we tick BPM and do it say by ascending, then by holding command and clicking the next column you want to organize by, for example, key, it will then organize it in BPM and then in key. So if we just scroll into this a bit further, you can see here we're at 125 BPM and it'll go to the next key. So we've got 1A, 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 and then 2A, and then 3A, then 4A. And then we don't have any in 5A, for example, in this crate, but we go again to 6A and then to 8A and it's, it goes up in ascending order. You can change it and do it in descending order of BPM but ascending order of key, and you can change these. If you want to undo this, if you think, oh, they're locked together, what you have to do is hold Command and Shift and then click the secondary sorting column again, and then that will unlock that setting and turn it off again. So you can just organize by BPM. But this can be useful, you could do it by BPM and date added, so all your latest tracks, all in BPM order. Um, so you're going through all your BPM ranges and then you go to the later tracks and, and that way. So there's different ways you can do this, but I particularly like the BPM and the key attached together. And there we have it, five quick tips to help you better organize your Serato DJ Pro DJ library.
It's really worth getting on top of your music management, especially when you come to playing out regularly to crowds. You want to be able to know exactly where that music is when you need it. And also things like the smart crates, it's gonna give you suggestions of what to play next even because it will be gathering tracks that maybe work if you've set the right rules. Um, and yeah, I've used it loads in real life environments and it's really helped me out when I've been DJing to crowds. As promised, if you want to download our free Crossfader music pack to help build your music library, then just click the link where you can sign up and get access to that music pack and practice some of these organizational tips on that as well. Thanks for watching and please remember to comment below which of these five tips was your favorite or one that you didn't know before that you do now. Please remember also to like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff to help us keep making more videos just like this one. I'll see you again soon.